there's a, an old saying, a day late and a dollar short. Uh, this bill is a lot of days late and a lot of dollars short, Mr. Speaker. The public health emergency ended a long time ago. We have serious public health issues to deal with, but the public health emergency expired a long time ago. And I speak for many of my constituents, Mr. Speaker, when I say that there's a tremendous amount of frustration in the state of New Jersey with this legislative body abdicating its authority to the executive and allowing Phil Murphy to run this state by executive fiat for more than a year. Uh, this, this bill should have been voted on in 2020, and we shouldn't be here today uh, celebrating. We should be asking, why didn't this body assert its proper authority months ago? I have grave concerns about continuing, though, Mr. Speaker, continuing to give the governor incredible authority over so-called pandemic responses going into the fall, uh, and especially as our schools reopen, without having to declare an emergency. So uh, we have an executive who abused his power uh, for over a year, extending public health emergencies when none existed. Uh, we have a legislature who abdicated its authority because it didn't want any part of making the tough decisions about how to balance economic well-being with our public health, how to balance the educational well-being of our children with public health. This body, the majority, refused to deal with those issues. Uh, and it should have, and the executive took that instead. And what makes it worse is now the, the legislature is going to try to give the governor even more power uh, without declaring a public health emergency in the fall. Uh, it is wrong. Uh, I have some questions, uh, Mr. Speaker. I know you're the sponsor. I don't know if Mr. Assemblyman Shivarlati will answer those questions, but I do have some questions with respect to a specific part of the legislation that extends the uh, eviction moratorium, the moratorium on, on evictions. And I don't know if uh, the speaker would entertain that from the dais or if someone else will. Assemblyman Chevrolet will, will answer questions. I'll see, I see you through the glass, Assemblyman. Uh, thanks. So I, several questions then for, uh, for, the, uh, for the sponsor's surrogate then, if, if that would be okay, Mr. Speaker. I'm sorry. Okay. S several questions for the... Yes. Co-sponsor, perhaps. On the bill. Uh, thank you. Uh, many other states in the country, including California, Connecticut, New York, are ending their eviction moratoria uh, by the end of the summer. I think Connecticut and California in June, New York by August. Uh, why is New Jersey extending the, the uh, moratorium on evictions until January of 2022? Well, thank you, Assemblyman. In reviewing our current situation in an attempt to avoid any potential uh, cliff uh, evictions, uh, financial cliff, we negotiated with both the Senate and the governor uh, a date in this bill of January 1st. However, as you know, Assemblyman, there are many members on this House, I believe on both sides of the aisle, which are working on this issue. And I'm committed to continue working on that issue and hope that we will have legislation soon that will end the moratorium and not only support our tenants, but also our small landlords. And Mr. Speaker, through you, uh, can the uh, sponsor identify any other state in the union that is extending its moratorium on uh, evictions for seven months? No, I cannot. We've heard time and again in this state that data determines dates. Anyone hear that phrase? before in the last 14 months? Data determines dates. So let's talk about some data. Uh, can the sponsor identify, again through you, Mr. Speaker, how many tenants in the state are actually unable to pay their rent uh, in New Jersey? Assemblyman, did you know that is a, that is a difficult uh, question to answer because individuals, we have multiple data points that we can look at. We look at the number of eviction notices that have all been filed with the courts. Uh, we, can, we are trying to collect data and continue to collect data on the number of individuals who are in arrears. So at this time, I do not have a, a specific number, and I don't, I don't think we have a true number on the number of individual tenants impacted and not able to pay their rent. I also think, Assemblyman, it determines how we define being able to, to, to pay their rent. Well, and Mr. Speaker, again, I, I appreciate the candor uh, and, and the exchange any metric at all would be better than no metric. 
at, at all. I, let, let me, uh, through the speaker, is, is there any um, means test to the moratorium on the eviction? In other words, any income level that um, uh, must be met or it must be uh, under in order to benefit from the eviction moratorium? Not under this bill, Assemblyman. Under this bill, uh, Executive Order uh, 106, which is the uh, tenant and landlord, uh, the tenant eviction moratorium is extended till January 1. Uh, it can be uh, changed. And again, I will reiterate that members of this House are working on a piece of legislation that we hope will address the issue and move that date up. Mr. Speaker, through you, uh, may I uh, recommend to the sponsors he's working on those, uh, that legislation, a hardship provision. Uh, to my knowledge, the other states who have uh, continued the eviction moratoria in, in their jurisdictions have some hardship provision that requires a tenant to um, show that there's a reason why um, they, they need relief from the eviction process. Would the sponsor consider uh, that hardship uh, certification or hardship showing in the legislation that uh, he's that, working that's on. not on this bill. That's not on this bill. That's it's a it's a rhetorical comment on your part. It's not a question for him about what a new bill might include. I'm, you want I'm to make sorry. the statement that it ought to include this, which you did. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, <laughs> wrong forum, Mr. Speaker. I I, I thought I understood um, Assemblyman Chivalotti to suggest that he was working on the legislation. I, point well made, and and I do think that there should be some hardship. Uh, showing for, for our residents uh, to, to benefit from this. There, there is something, though, that is specific, I think, to the, to the uh, legislation through you, Mr. Speaker. Um, my understanding is that there's approximately $350 million in federal aid for tenants uh, that came to us in the CARES Act. Uh, and I'm unaware of how much has been uh, actually distributed to tenants in New Jersey, which could help alleviate the problem for tenants and landlords in the state. And uh, through you, Mr. Speaker, does the sponsor know how much of that aid has been distributed such that this might not be even a necessary moratorium? But if he knows, he can answer the question, but it's not a question relative to the bill, Assemblyman. Let's try to stay on the bill. Well, I mean, if he knows, right. he knows. If he wants to answer the question, let him answer the question. Okay. Let's, let's see if he can answer the question. I don't know. If he doesn't know, it's not because it's, it's not in this bill. Let's stay on the bill. Uh, Assemblyman, I do not know that number off the top of my head. What I will say to you, though, is the frustration you are voicing concerning um, there being a means test and, and recognizing that any failure of rent is due to the COVID-19 and that the money that we've been set aside uh, to support tenants needs to be expended uh, quickly, those are all uh, issues that I sympathize with and, and support, but I don't have it in the bill. Um, and again, on, on the bill, may I suggest that this is something that this body works on to get the money that has been appropriated to our state to the people who need it. Uh, as opposed to uh, these broad measures that uh, aren't well directed to people uh, who need it. Obviously, there's no means test uh, in the moratorium. Here's a, another set of questions or, or, or topics, Mr. Speaker, through you. Is there any health data uh, to suggest that this moratorium is necessary? Uh, a seven-month moratorium on evictions. Is there any, anything about the COVID pandemic as we stand here today on June 3rd that suggests that this is required? All I can say, Assemblyman, is that we've made tremendous progress by working together. I think, un unlike some of my colleagues on the other side, I think the, the governor and the legislature worked together. I think we were involved in the process. I think we've addressed uh, the initial waves of COVID-19. But to discuss specific data, none of that's within the bill. What we were trying to create here, Assemblyman, which I know you can uh, understand and be sensitive to, is a way to approach the new norm. Right After operating under a public health emergency and a state of emergency for over a year, how could the legislature end the public health emergency, give some certainty to the public, and begin, begin to move forward to a new norm? And that's what I tried to do in this bill. Uh, Mr. Speaker, one more uh, question uh, through you, uh, and, and that is, uh, has the, have the sponsors of this legislation given any consideration to the impact on property taxes that such a moratorium might have. And of course, th this impact would come from uh, uh, rental properties being devalued because they're not collecting rent for long periods of time, and then having those uh, rental properties submit uh, property tax appeals and seeking lower assessments. Has there been any consideration uh, 
to, to that uh, factor that uh, could be a, an effect of this uh, bill. Again, Assemblyman, I think any time we work, we work on any piece of legislation in this House, if you're a resident of the state of New Jersey, you worry about property taxes. And as a member who pays property taxes in the state of New Jersey, I'm certainly sensitive to that and worry about them. Uh, but in regards to this bill and the particular section we're discussing, the idea was to create a runway, right, to uh, end, end the moratorium as well as give our colleagues time to develop a solution to, to the issue that you're asking about. And I apologize that it's not in this bill, but honestly, it's just, it's not something that we went into details in this bill. Mr. Speaker, on the bill, and I, I want to commend uh, Assemblyman Chivarlotti for his, uh, again, his candor, his goodwill in, uh, in trying to respond uh, to the best of his ability to these questions. Obviously, there aren't answers to some of these questions, uh, which is troubling, but um, I want to thank him for uh, his, uh, again, his goodwill. It's uh, uh, emblematic of the way in which he's conducted himself, in my experience with the Assemblyman, uh, for the time we've served together. Uh, just on, on, on the bill, thank you. Uh, and I would just remind everybody, I, I, listen, tenants who have had a hard time in a rough economy, in a pandemic, in an emergency, we saw this, we had great sympathy and care uh, for our fellow New Jerseyans who might have needed a lifeline. People understood that. Um, but let's not forget, there are no tenants in this state if there are no landlords in this state. And there are two sides to this coin, and we have to be attentive to both uh, parties' needs, both, both interests. Um, I think what we've heard is that this, this bill with respect to the eviction moratorium is an outlier nationally. Uh, even, even our uh, most liberal neighbors, California, Connecticut, New York, are ending their moratorium uh, much sooner. They have hardship requirements. Um, and, and, and what's worse is there is no data supporting it. We don't know how many tenants are, are in need. We don't know how much money we've gotten to them already. Uh, we don't know how much money it will take to get them out of trouble and, and uh, make it right with their landlords and avoid eviction uh, to, uh, with respect to this aspect of the bill especially. I think it's poorly thought out. Uh, I, I urge this legislature to come back and fix the problems that are being created by this uh, extension. And uh, of course, for the reasons I cited at the beginning, I oppose the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.